Mm. Now, but now, now, th th this is the dismal picture that you have just painted, and I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned. Mm. So, how do you, you are in the field, and you have been doing this now for for, for some years. So, how, how, how desperate are we getting? I mean, we, how desperate are we right now? I mean, if from what you have said so far, it just looks as if no effort has been made at all to no, 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 to, no. to help these children grow properly. Efforts are being made, but those efforts need to be pulled together, one. And that is presupposing you have a plan. Because you have to prioritize your investment. Take, for instance, if I earn 25,000 naira as a, as a father, yes, every month, 25,000 naira. The question is, what do I do with that twenty-five? With that twenty-five thousand, I need to pay accommodation. I need to feed. I need to get to work, and I need to meet one or two a few social obligations. You are, what is my family size? Hmm. If my family size is the larger it is, hmm. the more challenging. Now, if there are no remedies in the system. To support or to complement. To, to support. For instance, if the public education system is weak at primary, at pre primary and primary school level, what happens? I am forced to take my child to the private sectors. In fact, there is a school in Iwayamako Coaxis where the students pay school fees per day. Excuse me? Yep. Per day. I mean what I'm telling you. The paper day. It's a privately owned institution. So you go to school according to what your parents can afford. So for that child who goes once a week, if you ask the child, he will say I'm a student. Yes. In which school? I'm in school. He will yes. mention the name of the school. But is that child in school? Mm -hmm. That child is more out of school than in school. Than in school. But when we are capturing figures of in school, because that's when you go to that school, you get the school enrollment figures and you add it on. It's not a public school, mind you. Yes. And it does not necessarily mean that it's an approved school. But the parents want to be seen to be doing something. So we need to make sure that when we are investing, we must invest in pre primary and primary at public level. Education level. level. Yes. Adequately. I live in Ala Gomeji. There is a public primary school, school there near me called Ro uh, Lady Lack. Uh, you know, when I see that school, I shed tears. Hmm. Because if that school, with the space and everything, if it is upgraded as it ought to, it can mop up. It can take on more children. You see, I know the population here is huge. And that will dissuade parents sending their children to mushroom private, private schools, schools with underqualified teachers because they have lost faith in that level of education as it is, or the trust is not as great. But when you go to junior and senior secondary schools, you will see that enrollment is higher than in our primary, public primary schools. Why? Because they can see that there has been focused attention. But you need to prepare those children to get here. You see, when we worry about our children's capacity for numeracy and literacy and conversing in English or any other language, language outside of their mother tongue, it is because of the weak foundations that they have. But so where did we derail? How did we get to lose all this? Because many of us didn't. I mean, we, 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 we grew up in this, of, yes, in this public, environment. Yeah. So what happened? What really happened? Can you put your finger on it? There are many things that happened. Um, and I'm not being apologetic. The total cost of military intervention in governance left critical areas unattended to. First, when the military came, they came with patriotism as the 
facade. But what happened? They used what used to be our regional, you know, arrangement. They collapsed it. They wanted a unitary system for their own command purposes, which was easier for them. But developmentally, people don't develop that way. That way, people develop at their respective paces. No two words, no two communities develop at the, the same, same pace. Thing. No two people. They move. Sometimes, people you started primary school with, some left at primary four for secondary school. Some left in primary five. five. Some left in primary six. six. Some dropped off completely because they couldn't cope or the system they didn't know how to, to deal, deal with, with them. them yeah. You know, so things happen. So that affected us. Then when it was now time to prioritize, <laughs> then, you know, we had the civil war, we yes, had all of that. Yes. So that also, uh, because we used to have national development plans, you know, and all Three years, those, five years, years, four years. You know, so all those things stopped. Then we had state creation. Then issues changed, depending on where you looked at. And then when they created states, issues were, okay, we needed office accommodation, and we needed accommodation for top civil servants. We needed this. So development is it's changed. So these are some of the contributory things. And since we have come back into democracy, our democracy has not been a democracy of development. It has been more democracy of, of, of office seeking. No, 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 no. It has been more of development of politics of democracy. <laughs> so we have reversed... So what are the issues? There are no issues. Nobody is telling me, for instance, that we will increase school enrollment in state A or across the country from at this percentage point to this. Nobody is measuring, for instance, if we pass this legislation. I mean, there is a typical example now. What in America people call Obamacare? Yes. How many millions have registered? Hmm. So tell me. Following this law that we passed in Nigeria, this is the number of people, the millions of lives is touching. So we have not reached that level because we don't even have what I will call the wherewithal as it is. Either institutional infrastructure, which is not necessarily physical, mm. but human mm. capital mm. Mm. and the mm. other necessities mm. to articulate the way to monitor and to evaluate this. Yes, things. and then to be, because accountability is not what you do at the end. Accountability is what you build into your process, you know. So, and I had the privilege of speaking with a, a federal legislator, and I said, a particular bill, I won't mention the bill because of the controversial nature. I said, Since you passed it, and Mr. President assented it to it, he assented it for it to become law. Tell me how many, the lives of how many Nigerians that we have bettered. Huh. Nothing. No figure. No figure. And I said, this is the problem. So you wasted legislative period and money and efforts. Hours, legislative resources. You did all of this and there was no way to track how this will make a difference. And you can, because there was no baseline. So we need to be able to tr be Scientifically tracking, doing it, yes. tracking those things and saying that we are reducing. Look at youth unemployment, which is a critical national issue. Because when you are talking of youth health and development, you are looking at youth in totality. Yes. When you give them education, you give them skills, you give them information, you give them access to youth-friendly services, they will be able to turn it around, get fully employed. employed. Nobody. At least we hear in other climes, they say job create, jobs created this month, 135,000. Created uh, So in a year, they can tell you we created 7 million jobs. And they can show you by sectors where those jobs, jobs are. are.